things are heating up and things are shaking more and more all around the world. But let's look at food, and more specifically, let's talk about ramen noodles. You saw ramen in the news. They've become prime currency among U.S. prisoners in the U.S. prison industry amid punitive frugality. That's what I should have said instead of ramen currency. Punitive frugality and cost-cutting measures that have reduced meal quality while passing off the burden to the prisoners, a new study says. Ramen has begun to replace the likes of cigarettes, stamps, and envelopes as the top commodity among prisoners, according to a new study called Must Work for Food, The Politics of Nutrition and Informal Economy in an American Prison by Michael Gibson Light, a doctoral candidate at the University of Arizona School of Sociology. Gibson Light observed prison work and interviewed around 60 inmates and prison staff at an unnamed male state prison in the U.S. Sun Belt from May 2015 to May 2016. Guided by past research on the same subject, his goal was to determine how correction systems in the U.S. are shifting burdens of everyday life in prison onto inmates in the enduring age of mass incarceration and cheap prison labor that benefits private corporations. The value of ramen indicates how desperate inmates are for decent nutrition during a day full of low-pay work. It's the culinary go-to for struggling 20-somethings just out of college. And now it's described as the most valuable U.S. prison commodity, instant ramen. According to an investigation led by Michael Gibson Light, a doctoral candidate at the University of Arizona, ramen noodles have overtaken tobacco as the hottest commodity in U.S. prisons. He says prisoners will exchange the cheap, easy-to-prepare, high-calorie noodles for a wide number of goods and services. And Gibson Light argues this is a bad sign, writing prisoners are so unhappy with the quality and quantity of prison food they receive that they have begun relying on ramen noodles. It takes a major issue or shock to initiate such a change. The issue, he says, is hunger. While his research is based on anecdotal evidence from just about 60 inmates, statistics from the U.S. Federal Bureau of Prisons show that corrections expenditures aren't keeping up with growing state prison populations. For Newsbeat Social, I'm Molly Real. For your Morning Monarchy, I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. I think this is a very good sort of what is now cliched called a teachable moment. Because remember, money is anything people agree has value. Reason has a great piece on six other alternative currencies from coca leaves to mackerel beyond the ramen standard. Time and again, cigarettes, of course, have served as a spontaneous currency behind bars, but they aren't the only good to have played that role. A new sociological study, of course, revealed that ramen noodles are now the currency of choice in at least one prison. While the ramen standard takes hold in that institution, other commodity currencies have emerged in other parts of the world, sometimes as a stopgap substitute for the government's money, and sometimes as something more long-term. Here's a few of the examples they've covered in reason over the years. The t-shirt standard. Haiti we're going to hear about Haiti in just a few minutes, has an extensive trade in second-hand clothes. It also has an official currency that isn't always stable, and so Haitians have sometimes used the former in the place of the latter. When the paper or coin currency of a nation is unstable and in short supply, it is not uncommon for a good, and often a relatively plentiful good, to take the place of currency via a kind of generalized barter, one of the filmmakers behind the documentary Secondhand Pepe explains. What about the minute standard? Kenya fell into chaos after the corrupt elections of 2007 and the stores that ordinarily sold prepaid phone minutes shut down amid the violence. Phone credits quickly became more valuable than the government's money and many people found it relatively convenient to use those units of talk time as a suitable currency. While this was a quick fix response to a crisis, mobile phone credits had already been used as an alternative currency in more stable times. As the cell phone economy took off, many uh, many Africans living abroad discovered that the safest, cheapest way to send remittances home was simply to buy phone minutes for their family. It was an easy step from there to just trading the minutes. What about the fish standard? Ramen isn't the only food to replace cigarettes as prison currency. Packs of mackerel and cans of tuna have done the same. One difference, while ramen's popularity as money is linked to its popularity as a meal, most prisoners don't like the mackerel enough to actually want to eat it. No doubt this makes it easier to accumulate savings. Ooh, the opium standard. Just as ramen isn't the only food to become a money, tobacco isn't the only drug to play that role. Seven years ago, an Associated Press dispatch from Afghanistan described a town where the common currency was what grew in everyone's backyard. Opium. 
The scene sounded like a Norman Rockwell Thomas De Quincey mashup. When children felt like buying candy, they ran into their father's fields and returned with a few grams of opium folded inside a leaf. Their mothers collected it in plastic bags, trading 18 grams for a meter of fabric or two liters of cooking oil. Even a visit to the barber shop could be settled in opium. Alas, the economy of this village sputtered to a halt last year when the government began aggressively enforcing a ban on opium production. You didn't realize the war on drugs could double as a deflationary monetary policy. In Colombia, on the other hand, a government crackdown inadvertently ex- encouraged the use of coca leaves as a medium of exchange. No money has reached Garim- Garima, that's in Colombia, for months, the Telegraph reported in 2008, and transactions are conducted in coca with one gram enough to buy a soft drink. Mm, maybe a Coca-Cola? Finally, the piss standard. When Reason blogged that Coke story we just mentioned eight years prior, they also linked to an article that claimed prisoners were using yet another valuable commodity as money, drug-free piss. Talk about liquid assets, ha! Ah, that's the one gold standard, but that name is already taken. Unlike that other gold standard, this one seems especially susceptible to inflation. Coca leaves to mackerel, money is whatever people agree that it is, and it doesn't always have to have... Federal Reserve note stamped at the top. Now, one of my most popular tweets of the last week, and it's fun kind of watching how things blast off. And I believe a lot of it was thanks to Pontiac Tribune on Twitter. Out of Pontiac, Michigan. McDonald's new Happy Meal toy must be some kind of sick joke. McDonald's, a company reviled as of late.